Hello everybody, my name is Yesfulman and today we're going to talk about how to get all of your Steam supported controllers to work with your Steam games and your non-Steam games. And we're especially going to be talking about how to get specific non-Steam games to work through Steam and allow you to have, uh, have them work like Xbox controllers. So for example, uh, if we want to get a Windows Store game or an Origin game, or anything of that nature, we're going to talk about that. But first, let's get into how to get your normal controllers just to work. Because some people, you probably plug your controller, it's not working. <laughs> well, I got this PlayStation controller, why isn't it working? So first off, it's got to be a PlayStation 4 controller, it, on that note. But we're going to go up this little cog up here. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what's going on there. We're going to go to the little cog there. We're going to go to controller settings. And you'll see right here, uh, these need to be check marked. So see right here, PlayStation 4 configuration support. If the Steam input PlayStation 4 configuration support is enabled, it will then be rec reconfigurable per game. So basically what it's saying is now your PlayStation 4 controller will work. Well, I disabled mine, but now it'll work, right? So now this will allow me to change my controller in my controller settings for each game and it won't just act as a PlayStation controller. So if I disable this, then it'll just act like a normal X it'll just act like a normal Xbox controller and I won't be able to mess with it within Steam. Okay, so now that's out of the way. If that's all you came here for for this video, I guess I'll catch you around. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, please leave a like, you know, whatever. Comment if you have any questions or any thoughts or whatever. I'd love to hear them. But for the rest of you guys, Let's get our non-Steam games to work, especially those pesky UWP Windows Store games, because they never seem to want to work with Steam. And at least the, you know, at the very least, you can always add the launchers for Uplay and Origin, right? Well, we're gonna circumvent that. So before we get into it, we need to talk about one more thing here with the controller settings. So there is a feature that was introduced here, and it, it's not in my old video where I talked about the Steam controller. Uh, in the old video, we just set it up to where we launched a CMD file, and that's what Steam read as the game. Uh, this one, we're going to do something, it's going to act a little similar, but it's going to be using a downloaded program that actually lets you still, lets the system read a Xbox controller, as well as having the in-game HUD come up, the in-game menu still come up. But we have to get this a few things out of the way first because we're going to want them later. Yeah. So we're going to go to base configurations and instead of going to desktop configuration like we did last time, we're going to go to Steam Core configuration. This is probably going to be a very underutilized pro program or feature and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So what the Steam, uh, the Steam Core configuration does is it lets you push that little center button here on your controller. And when you hold that, that's when this setting is now available to you. It doesn't matter if you're in-game, in your desktop, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you can do that. So I set this up to have kind of this, this little bit of a version of the original default one, so yours will look a little bit different. But I added in the alt game. For you, if you never use Steam Chords outside of it, you could just probably set one up that's kind of like my alt game here. But the alt game was very important. So what I did was I put Windows Key Tab, and I want to explain that real quick because I don't know if everybody here knows of what Windows Key Tab is. You probably all have heard of Alt Tab, right? So here I can just tab across things, right? Here's OBS. If I just keep, if I hold Alt, keep pushing Tab, it'll go. If I use the arrow keys, it'll go. If I hold Shift, it'll go backwards, and Tab goes forwards or whatever, right? And then when I let go of Tab, it goes to the program. Well, Windows Key Tab works a little bit differently. So you'll notice a few things. First off, there's all these weird other things here, uh, but you'll see here, now I can just clearly see, well, just these two in this box. And I've let go of the keyboard. I just move my mouse right now, right? So that's a little bit more convenient. You'll also notice one thing, OBS isn't there. I noticed you guys probably saw that. Uh, and that's because it only shows what's available on this desktop. Since I have a multi-monitor setup, uh, my OBS is on a different window. So this is a little bit more convenient if you're trying to use this in like more of a TV setup because now you can just see these big boxes and they're easy to see and they're easy to navigate to. So that's why I have these little arrow keys here for the joystick 
the start button or option button on PlayStation 4 will let you do this. And I still have my mouse and key, my mouse options with my touchpad and everything. So if I set my controller to go to that mode, right? Now I can navigate through these different options with my joystick and I can click X and click enter. That's going to be really convenient, probably in general. Some of you have already probably had some use cases for something like that, right? It's also really nice for launchers when you have a launcher that pops up and then you can just like do this mm -hmm. and then move your mouse around. Like I'm doing this with my like, controller right now, right? Seems a little wonky with the mouse for some reason, but you get the point. Okay, so now we've done that. Now let's move on to what we're all here for. How the heck do we get this to work with, especially those damn Windows Store games, right? <laughs> like Forza or Halo or whatever. Well, let's exit big picture mode real quick, all right? And then we're going to go to this website here called Glosk. All right, I'm on the download page, but this is called Glosk. Um, and it says Global Steam Controller. So what its initial purpose was for was to make it so, well, it says right here, it's to use your Steam Controller as a system-wide X input controller. So this way you can just use your Steam controller, it'll work like an Xbox controller, but it does it through Steam. And so what that also means is it works through PlayStation controllers and whatever other controller uh, Steam supports. So once you download it, when you go click on this, it'll take you to this download page that's going through GitHub. And you'll either want to download this or this. Uh, this will just act like a normal installer. I think this just has everything packaged in drag and drop. I don't remember exactly but it's clearly a bigger file, so this is probably just gonna be the web installer. So once you get that, you're going to want to open Glosk, and you might have to go through a little prompt, and you'll see this little box. Now, of course, I've already set some programs and games up to work with it, but we're gonna to wanna to create another one, and that's because Microsoft just did something, like not just that recently, but they've set up something with Halo, where there is now a launcher for the Halo game. So if I click on, Halo Wars Definitive Edition, right? I'm trying to launch it, but it went away only to be launching, well, their little Halo app. And it's less of a launcher and more of a hub. I mean, like you just got various Halo things. So now if I clicked on this, I can play and it'll launch my game. Now, of course, I don't want to really go through this right now, uh, but yeah. So I need to fix that. I need to make it so I can still have my game work because if I launch Glosk, it won't work. So I'm gonna set that up on here. And this is a great reason as to why we need to set all the other stuff up first. So we're gonna go to create new. You can name it. <laughs> you can name it. And uh, with, okay, so one thing I wanna note real quick. When it comes to Windows Store games, I've noticed that it seems to name it itself, and I, my names don't ever stick. So if I name this Halo Launcher, apparently Halo Launcher, sorry about my keyboard, uh, you want to make sure you enable overlay, enable virtual controllers, launch game, and close shortcut when applications, when, you, when your application closes. This right here, real quick, is going to bring up a browser to just to find your normal exe game so like starcraft or whatever right uh this is going to bring up your uwp obviously because it says uwp this might take a bit for me sometimes it takes a bit sometimes it's like really fast right now it seems like it's kind of somewhere in the middle uh, so once this is done we're going to go ahead and find the game that we want to add it's just going to be a simple list it's going to be really easy and uh we're going to add it in so let's give this a sec Okay, now it's open. We need to find Halo. Uh, let's see, this is the other Halos. Okay, here, bam. Okay, well, so once we find that, we're gonna click OK. And we're gonna click Save. Once we've done that, we're gonna want to restart Steam. Now I wanna show you something before we do that. So you'll notice right here, I have my already preset Xbox thing, which has all my Xbox games, but nothing in games, right? I wanna make sure that stays. So we're gonna add all the games to Steam. Click Yes, OK. And once Steam restarts, we'll see if they're still there. Because that's kind of an important thing. Because and this and one thing to also keep in mind, this doesn't have to be open every time you run it. This is just to set everything where it needs to go. So we're gonna get rid of all of this here. And boom, they're still here. So it doesn't remove them. They still they still stay in the same place they always would, but Halo's there. And you notice it doesn't say Halo Launcher. So now if I turn on my PlayStation controller again, right? 
and let's start up big picture and we're gonna go to library let's go ahead and go to installed and let's find my halo let's go ahead and launch that oops don't want to go there let's go ahead and launch it like we would from the uh, couch once this launches, you'll notice there's nothing popping up, and you saw how fast that launcher popped up last time. This is again one of those reasons we wanted to add that little feature in. So when I hold this, go ahead and do this, I can now navigate to Halo, which is right there. Boom. And I wanted to keep that mouse and keep my mouse feature in there because now I can click and click play now. So I could do all of this from my couch and still have it. Now, of course, Let's go ahead and skip all this. And now it works as an Xbox controller. So I'm effectively launching an Xbox game from Steam and playing it with my PlayStation controller on a PC. Yeah, it's a little weird, but it's awesome because that's what PC is all about, right? So let's go ahead and... Well, actually, that's right. We have it on my controller. So let's just go ahead and do this. We're going to go to Gloss again. So you notice it's kind of a blank little window and the reason we're doing it like this is because it doesn't pop up with we do UWP apps so if I push the center button and you'll see right here PlayStation controller but if I go back and I go back to the Halo Wars I'm pushing the button and uh, well you can see nothing's happening now if I do this You'll see it's it's already here and if I go back and this is because it is a separate app it's a separate app it's not really connected to the game but it gives you the same feature control it's just a little bit more wonky so you're definitely gonna want that alt tab feature in there or the Windows tab in my case as you can see it's been really helpful here and uh, I don't exit shortcut doesn't always work at least with UWP but it will exit once you've closed the app it's launched. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to Halo Wars and close it. And then of course, since I have this set up here, I have to close this. And now if we look over here, yep, it's gone, right? Cool. So now that it's gone, it did everything we needed to do. You were able to launch your game, run it with a controller, no problems, be able to modify the controller scheme, set up everything you'd normally do with the Steam game on whatever game you want. Um, of course, when it comes to like you play and Origin games, you might have to do a little tweaking on how you launch the game. You might have to launch it from the launcher. You might have to launch it from the game. You might be able to launch it from the game directly. You might have to put like the launcher still in your Steam thing so you can update the game every so often. Like especially with Blizzard games, you can launch them directly from the uh, from the game itself but you're still going to want to update it so it, it's it's not always it's not perfect but it is an option and now you can launch all of your games right from steam from your, if you have a tv set up or you just want to use it as a controller you now have that option i hope i hope that helped you guys uh if it didn't let me know so i can try to help you guys in the, in the comments if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, or maybe even ideas for future videos or things you'd like to see me try to solve, let me know in the comments and I'll help you guys. Uh, and of course, leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't, go ahead and leave a thumbs down, but please try to let me know what I did wrong because I'd like to self-improve. I'd like to make my future videos better, so if I did something wrong, let me know, please. And uh, of course, uh, you know, if you want more future content, because I'm probably going to do more about Steam, because I have some other ideas for Steam itself that I could do. So uh, if you want to see more on this and in general tech kind of tutorial videos, because that's what I'm kind of leaning towards in this channel, go ahead and subscribe, and uh, I'll have to catch you guys later. So hope you all stay yesful, never, never stop learning, and I'll see you all in the next video.